where is home? Yo, that's a profound hey. question. Where is home? Yeah, where is home? Your so, kids are in Kenya, yeah, your husband is in it's Qatar. It's where is home? $36,000 later for a two years course. Hey. Kenya shillings? Canadian, sorry. Okay. 36,000 Canadian. Okay. Where? My name is Charlie Karomi, and apart from being drop dead gorgeous and incredibly talented, I am also an immigrant. You see, in 2022, I packed up my bags and left my home country of Kenya to a country I'd never been to before. For adventure, for opportunity, for meh, why not? But my story is not unique. You see, every single year, tons of people immigrate to new countries to start new lives, just like me. That means tons of new, exciting stories are out there. This is a place where you'll get to listen to some of them. This is Vibes and Visas. So in case you don't know, in case you've never been an immigrant, one of the most vital important steps you have to do when you move to a new country is find your country people. Guys from where you are from, who, who know, who understand what you're going through, who know what it is, what it goes, what you can do, and who can look out for you and help okay, you. Okay, hold up just a quick hot minute. Allow me to interrupt myself for just one second. I was just editing that episode of Vibes, and what I just said is wrong. Oh, you absolutely have to do it. It's vital for you. You don't have to find people from your home country. Actually, I think it's healthier for you to go and meet and interact with new people, new cultures of the place that you move to. It's healthier for you because in understanding new things, that builds a better understanding of the world for you. So do you have to find people from your home country? No, you do not. Will they be better placed if you do find them to understand what you're going through and help you out? Yes, definitely. But does it mean when you don't find them, when you can't find them, you will fail? Hell to the no, you will prosper. I was just trying to write a compelling intro. That's all, but that was wrong. Everything else in the episode is absolutely right, though. <laughs> anyway, back to vibes and visas. Now, for my wife and I, one of those people were the Mukiras, two beautiful people, power couple, who've really taken us under their wing, helped us out. You guys have met one half of the Mukiras, Almasi, the world famous, you guys have met him. And today I'm here with the other half. So ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode of Vibes and Visas, it's the one, the only, the lady with the longest dreadlocks on Vancouver Island, it's Stella! Bro! Bro! Bro, bro, check his address. Come on, come on now. 2013. 2013. I think 10 years. 10 years. 10 years next year. So I goals. Am, sorry, this year. 10 years, because it's 2023. Me, but don't come on, it's 22. It's going to come on. How are you selling it? Four, it's going to be tight. Guys, I'm going to be able to get gold. Kericho gold. My bad. Kericho gold. Pure Kenyan tea. This is amazing because when I did an episode with a lady called Melissa Karomi, I don't know if you know her, I went to her house. She didn't even offer me a beverage. What? Come on. So sipping on some Kenyan tea uh-huh. with an absolutely amazing Kenyan babe. How are you doing, Stella? Poor kabisa mambo. Nikama si jakuana this year. Happy New Year. No. Nikweli. Ojaniona this year. Apana. Long time ago, five. Six. Six. Yeah. Happy New Year. Tuja chalewa. Na fi, na feel mtu anajaka kusema Happy New Year maybe March. on the fifteenth. Aye. Fifteenth of March. Happy New Year in Paka February, please. Is it? Va- happy Valentine's Day. No, I happy thought New maybe mid Jan. That's when you stop <laughs> saying Happy New Year. Tutaona. Let's see. Let's see how long it takes us. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't seen you this year. Nice Tutana, to see you. Nice to see you You're too, fresh. man. Kamsa and Kasawa. So this is Vibes and Visas, by the way. In case you don't know, Vibes and Visas is the place where immigrants come to share their stories. Tell us what they are doing, what they are up to, if things are going good, bad. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Everything. And 
and my name is Tali Karomi, by the way. So I to go in the city of Courtney, which is where I live, which is where Stella lives as well. Stella, this is how we start every episode of Vibes and Visa. I'm going to ask you a question. And then you give me a one sentence reply. Are we together? And then up in the Kwongas, and I like talking, but I'll try. <laughs> one question. The question is, uh -huh. why did you come here? Like Canada or Courtney, yeah. Canada? Canada. In one sentence. Uh, I guess to study and to set up a foundation for the kids. Mm. Study and set up a foundation. Yeah, a better for the foundation kids. for the kids. Okay. Mm. Beautiful. Stella, Minata yeah. ones here from the beginning. And by the way, we can switch between English and Swa. The okay. only difference is when we're speaking Swa, I'll have to write subtitles. Hey. So your cousin Takwa. But Nisawa, let yeah. me ask you, you when did you come to Canada? Twenty seventeen. So five six years ago. 2017. 2017. I think 2017, Feb 11. 2017, February 11. Mm -hmm. That's a nice one, down yeah, to the remember. exact date. Yeah, I remember. Like, you know, story yako? Huh? Story yako ya immigrant haijanzi ya Canada. No, haijanzi ya Canada. Ulianzi ya wapi? Uh, I want to say, I think it started in Qatar. Uh, Almasi and I used to live in Qatar. And then it, we knew eventually at some point will relocate to somewhere else, but we didn't really think Canada, but we knew that that's not where we really wanted to stay for yeah. the rest of our lives. So Kenya to Qatar to Canada. So Kenya to, to Qatar Canada. to Canada. When did you leave Kenya to Qatar? Because I'm trying to understand Mbona ulitoka. Ulikuwa na kazi Kenya? I can't remember when I left Kenya, mm -hmm. but yeah, just not really. I was employed and then something happened and then yeah, this is it's a different story and then i had um uh i was running a spa mm -hmm. it was in um at a place called savannah just karibuna home to mm -hmm, next mm -hmm. to home yeah and then after that i opened up a, a restaurant kind of thing a yeah. hustling it wasn't a big thing it yeah. was just like a small restaurant somewhere Centered where the Matatus guys would come. Ama kibanda, kinamaba. ama kibanda, ama hai, hai, it, it, eh. it, it wasn't a kibanda per se. It eh. was like a room and enclosed. And then there was like a separate kitchen there that we were cooking things. Come on, things like what? Chapos, uh, beans. Yani it was, uh, you know, something that you'd get harakaraka in a rush. Mm. And I what, can't... What was it called? I can't remember what that one Come was called. On, Stella. It was a long Zuri. Zuri. Zuri mm -hmm. spa. Yeah. Iyo kibanda kwanza, oh my gosh. Nakumbuka, I was telling people there how I'm the one who cooked those chapos. I'm the one to do you cook, to do what? And up to <laughs> up to now, to do you cook a chapati? But it, you know, it, it, it did its purpose mm -hmm. for a bit, like it took my eight, maybe seven months, and then I got sick. Oh, yeah. yeah, so uh, when I got sick, even uh, in and out of hospital, leaving it to somebody else, yeah. it just didn't, it didn't pick, so it just died. Oh, oh. was that when you decided, ah, oh, when a Kenya story in Malaysia, and then, you need to move? I'm so, so at that point, I really didn't even know what I was doing, you know, Nile hmm. too, you're just there, you don't know, yeah, you're just chilling. And then I had my, some of my family who were abroad, so, so they make it even comfortable when they start sending this to Western Unions. Are uh, you? You're like you're good. <laughs> hey, you call your besties Saturday wapi? <laughs> so life was comfortable. Yeah. And then until um, one of my really like my closest cousins, like who was my also my mom's best friend, yeah, relocated to Qatar. Mm -hmm. He went through. It was at that time Kenya and Qatar were doing some joint thingy. So he went through the government, went to Qatar and worked for a company called Kara. People who are in Qatar know that it was a, a taxi service, bus. And it was, I think it was, I don't know about now, but yeah. I think it at that time it was the only means of transport. Yeah. Cara, those blue buses. Uber, before Uber, before all of that. I, no, there were cabs. I yeah. think there were yellow cabs, but Karwa, those buses. I, and then Sister Zilikwa Zime, like Kenyans. Well, like this, it was yeah. a nice opportunity. It was so, a nice opportunity. There are probably a couple of people watching right now who are like, I remember Kara. Yeah, Kara. Yeah. I don't know if it's still there, but Kara was the thing those days. So my Kuzo relocated. And then he got to Qatar. And then he hit me up. He's like, oh, you know, something's going on here. I met somebody. 
um, this is what they're doing, they're into recruiting people at that time, going abroad, yani Qatar, you've gone abroad, Qatar, Dubai, mm. it's an opportunity. It is. Yeah. It still is, I think. Sasa, it was bittersweet because for me, I was so comfortable. Unajoyle, the life I have at home was nice. Your friends, nini, your nini. family. Yeah, nini. the kids. So then what happened is, so I went. They organized the visas. At that time, it wasn't really hard. But Qatar, going to Qatar at that point, you had to be sponsored by someone you couldn't just like getting visas was so hard you had mm-hmm. to be sponsored so the guy the the lady friend of my cousins sponsored me and i went nice so i went i found them living and so Wait, so did you go into a job or you just went to visit at first it was a work permit i think it was mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah so i went there in the name of work but i just went to chill really yeah. i didn't even know if i'd stay long nearly too so that i can enter the yeah, country and just yeah. check it out. And and you're young, you want to move around to see what's there. Mm-hmm. Like you are kuka two place more, you're adventurous. Kabisa nile tu pia. You know, you feel like it's it's change and then my aunties on this other side had been trying to tell me, Come here, come here. But then you try. I remember I went to once upon a time I went to the embassy in the States. I rejection. And then my grandma I went with my grandma. She was going for my aunt's wedding and I yeah. remember I was with her and the my aunties were like, Go with her, nini nini, they'll stamp you. I went there, mine was denying her, she was given to GX amount of years. To go to the state, yo, I was like, yo, but the U.S. Embassy in Kenya like, is a stressful place. Yeah, na sayo from Sijui wapi you've walked all the way. Oh, yeah. That time, yeah, unakumbuka. I can't remember where the the, so, the embassy. Kule, uh, uh, main eh. road, and then you walk. Like, and then, and I'm with my yeah. grandma. Anyway, story for another day. Story for part two Back coming to. soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I went, and there was actually a headquarters in. Um, in Nairobi, a place called Ay, Kwanini Nasahau. I think to apply for your Qatari no, no, visa. No, no, no. So, so now I'm in Qatar. Mm-hmm. I'm with my cousin. Oh, oh, at this oh, point, I'm in the embassy. Uh-uh. So now we're in Qatar. Eh, so now we're in Qatar. You've gone in on a work permit. Mm-hmm. You're with your cousin. Yes. Uh-huh. So now, before that, they had this um, headquarters of this recruiting thingy. Anyway, this chick was running it from there. So she kind of had started it, but not Kabisa. Recruiting? What, what do you mean recruiting? So they were recruiting people to come and work in Qatar. Nannies. Mm-hmm. Lifeguards. Lifeguards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nini, um, this guy, security guys. Yeah. So a, a whole package. Yeah. So I did that. For a couple of years, mm-hmm. and at the same time, because um, I was working from home, I got to meet. So this lady, my cousin's friend, was an international uh, expatriate. Mm-hmm. She's from mm-hmm. Australia. Mm. From she, Australia. Yeah, she was from mm-hmm. Australia. She was working at an international school. Yeah. So at this particular school, her, the her colleagues were given um like a villa. They were like it was like an enclosed estate with villas, really nice ones. And then so everybody who was there, you could meet a family from Canada, a family from US. Yani, it's the United to, US the United, United, United Nations. Kabisa, right. Kabisa, UN. I love yeah, that to sounds like a yeah. soft life. Uwe. It was really nice at the time. So what happened was then she started talking to her friends and she was like, Oh, you know what? This is what I'm doing back home. And um and Stella is here also to try and help. So would you guys be interested in like having a full-time like nanny or someone to come mm. in and live with you guys and take care of things? Because life also there was so hectic. Because you, you know? have work, you have the kids, you have, yeah. Kabisa and at the, in Qatar, um, the wages there were so good. So you're paying someone like 1500 reals because I remember that was the range at mm-hmm. that time. I can't remember how much that was in Kenya. She says, but it was good money 1500 to maybe 2000, 2500. Come on, really nice family per month, per month, mm-hmm. tax free. 
Ta- by the way, Qatar doesn't have those Middle Eastern countries are kunanga taxes. Nakuna taxes. I saw your video the other day and I was laughing when you were talking about how at the, what you Yo. see on the shelves to drink. Here are the taxes. Where? These are, these are just a small detour. You know why I made that video? Huh? There's, a, there's a young lady, I think she's from Pakistan. She mm-hmm. just came to study at North Island. Mm-hmm. She had just 500 bob and legit 500 bob on her card to buy a computer and she was on the phone with her dad and her dad was like 500 it's fine so she takes the computer mm-hmm. and we're going to sell it to her and then the deal goes like 560 <laughs> you know she had to leave uh, i related to that video kabisa sabu those are the things that happened Taxes. when i came here but back anyway then. back to the tax anyway Qatar. Yeah, so she started talking to her friends and then her friends were like, ah, yeah, you know, let's try this. Sasa Mimi, we are online. I'm trying to look for people. Some people I knew, others I didn't. Ile too, you're like, nani uyo akonyumbani? Who's at home who wants to come and work? Oh, you started recruiting guys yourself. From home, yeah. Come on, entrepreneur. Where? Ndaongeza yo kwa CV. Entra- yeah, Sasa, uh, Stella, amazing lady, entrepreneur. Nitaongeza. I'm wasted years bila kwa kayo kitu kwa CV. <laughs> anyway. Yo, so you started getting guys. Eh, so, alafu napenda sana internet. So, I, nakumbuka, I started with Facebook, just there. And I started making posts. Like, if you know anyone who's wanting to work, ni, ni, ni. But now also, back home, I had a really good group of people, of friends. So, mm. it wasn't really... I think I got, I was able to get more people because people knew me, you know, ile friends of friends. Because yeah. sometimes if someone can just post that and you're like, mm, who you? And we've we've all heard the stories. Right? And you're yeah. like, kuna, there's conning, sijui, mm-hmm. nini, nini. So it was easier for me because I had friends, I love my friends, I had friends. And then the other advantage was I was already there. Mm. So, nile, I'm already there. They like when I was on your Facebook, they're eh, like, ah, but this is eh, Life is good. Yeah. So, so, uh, so what would what I would do at that point? Okay, Onyasha, you're interested. We would send you now to that headquarter office. I was telling you, which was somewhere, uko. somewhere, somewhere. Kumbuki ni wapi? I wish naza kumbuka yo Gina. But anyway, you go there, you give your pictures, and I think people paid less than ten k. Less than ten k. Less than ten k. Uh-huh. I stand to be corrected. Like in your registration, like Bora, you had your passport. Na your criminal record checks kila kitu kwa sawa. I think kwa office you paid less than 10k. Um, I can't remember. The flights were paid by the people by who the are going employer. to. Yeah, by the employers. How do you want to flight and then you come? Nice. So, Since we're here, hmm? and this is a question, because uh, we need to now, now come from Qatar to Canada. Mm-hmm. But since we're here, mm-hmm. I need to ask you, because this is a question that comes around a lot. A mm-hmm. lot of people are me, are me a story and a lot of people have been through. You get recruited by a company to go to the Middle East. Yeah. And then in Mateso, ama you get conned. Right? Yeah. What are some of the things? Do you know some things that someone can look out for if that doesn't happen to them? I'm a, it's hard because times have changed. It's yeah. years in between. I feel like how you avoided and how people who came through you avoided getting caught in any conning game I'm like, yo, is going by word of mouth. Nam tu na jua. Nam tu na jua. For example, even like now coming to Canada, kuna, there's this guy, Sijata Nitojina, and Anitwanani, Lakini Najua, there's this guy who's in Kenya. Mm-hmm. Uh, ni agent, mm-hmm. but most people go through him because he's brought people here and mm. it's worked out. Just word of mouth, eh, Just word don't, of don't mouth. go blind. Word of mouth, go like, ah, uli, 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 mm. uli, PTI. And yo. if also people are kind enough to tell you, Sabu, these days I don't know why that's such a thing that someone yeah. won't tell you at how I came, mm. it's a secret, Siju, what, but for sure, word of mouth. Okay, mm. okay, uh, we're going to take a quick pause there. That was part one story, but we make away in Qatar. We need to understand understand why you left Qatar and came to cuz uh, cuz mm-hmm. when you may dis- uh, describe Qatar was a soft life Qatar was good it was nice mm. so you're going to explain to me uh how and why you mm-hmm. left the heat of Qatar mm-hmm. to the chili mm-hmm. <laughs> to the chilliness mm-hmm. to the cold of Canada mm-hmm. I will talk about that just All now right. so, 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 so,